and Ted Keller, too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to you! Brains. It's what's for supper. Assuming, of course, you happen to be a zombie. Oh, Lord. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. With me is my overly enthusiastic butler, Livingston. And to this side, we have the diminutive damsel of distress, the lovely and talented Tangela. Back to the zombies, and more specifically, brains. While most of us have one of these useful organs lodged inside our craniums, at times it seems there are others who do not. But those of us who do have likely pondered at least once before if it is at all possible to transfer our brains to a younger body when our old bodies have come to the end of their useful life cycle. And that, precisely, is the premise of tonight's film, The Atomic Brain. A silly American name change. It was titled Monstrosity when it was released in Europe. That it was. However, our American film distribution friends decided that the adjective atomic is far more hip than the overused British noun monstrosity. And I would tend to agree. Onward. The tale revolves around an old rich woman who hires a young mad scientist to transfer her brain into one of three young women who have been hired as household help. All goes as planned until the inevitable chaos that ensues from one male scientist living with four women under the same roof. Think of it as three's company with two additional housemates and a copious serving of gore. Needless to say, hilarity ensues. Hmm. I would have to disagree, my dear. The situation with we three is nothing like three's company. It's more like two men and a baby. And joining us to take in this potential train wreck of a film will be legendary movie reviewer and all around wonderful person, the lovely and talented Jan Wall. Jan will tell us what precisely she thinks of tonight's film, tell us about other films she's enjoyed, and quite possibly illuminate us about what fine films may be on the horizon. She'll also tell us about her long and storied career on both television and radio, and even delight us with tales about some of the spectacular celebrities she's met over the years. So don't go away, for it is to be another night of brain transplant fright, right here on Creature Features. <clears throat> the living conditions here are more closely resembling Legend of Hell House. Only on Saturday nights. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are sponsored by DoorTank, distributor of quality commercial doors nationwide. Welcome to Creature Features. It's your favorite time of the week. You know, it's actually not. Yes, it is. Yeah. No, most people say this is not my favorite time of the week. It's the time I turn off my television and walk the dog. <laughs> oh, no. Um, a few people do say it is. Oh. And all the YouTubers. Oh, they love us. Oh, good. No, well, I love we... YouTube. Oh, I no. live on it. No, no, the YouTubers. Oh. The actual citizens of that planet. <laughs> no, they, they, they type okay. things and they say nice things and we love them. We're with Jan Wall. Jan, you know... 
I, I don't know how to describe you because you've done absolutely everything. Yeah, in show business. In mm-hmm. show business. So mm-hmm. you're like a maven of show business? I'd say Would Empress of Entertainment. Empress of I'd Entertainment? I prefer that. I love that. No, no, no. Empress of <laughs> well, Entertainment. Well, it's just so wonderful. It's been a life in show business. We're going to put that on your mm-hmm. Chiron. Mm-hmm. Well, what Empress a gift. What a fabulous, fabulous life it's been. I mean, I've met every movie star you could think of because I kind of started in the 50s in West L.A. Right. in terms of as a child. And so I met a lot of big movie stars when we had big ones around. I right. mean, Gable and Monroe and, I mean, everybody. That was like Cooper the golden and, age. Yeah, and, and then I went on to give lectures on cruise ships with people like Ernest Borgnon and Patricia Neal and Robert I Ryan. I Ernest Borgnon. You know, oh, he was the nicest oh, man. That's what I keep hearing. <gasps> he got mobbed. We were we were in Morocco, and he got mobbed by people because they knew Mikhail's Navy. The actual Moroccans mobbed him. <laughs> they all right. knew him. No, of but course. you know, he was married for like one day to Ethel Merman. Yeah, one day. Well, uh, it's in her autobiography. She left it blank. It's like two pages. My marriage to Ernest Borgnine. Oh she my left goodness. it blank. Yeah, I don't think there was much love lost what there. What a fun story. I know. All right, we're gonna watch this film. The Atomic Brian. Ooh. No, my sign says The Atomic Brian. We're going to watch The Atomic Brian tonight. Okay. Yeah. Actually, we're going to watch The Atomic Brain. <laughs> but I, you know, I'd like to watch The Atomic Brian as well. Well, why not? Don't yeah. you love we'll it that movies both. take us away? Takes Nin- us away. 1963. This mm-hmm. is from like your favorite era, right? Mm-hmm. Well, one yeah. of them. One of them. I like a lot of the errors. I truly do. I love movies that are just good. They take us away. They give us inspiration. They give us fun. We will not be doing this tonight. Oh. No. You will walk away from this interview very sad because of this movie. No. I don't know. I've it seen, no, I've seen, good. I've seen five minutes of this film. Bad, I, I'm huh? obliged by contract to, to watch at least five minutes of the film prior to taping. And uh, no, this does not look like a good film. I'm warning you ahead of time. So just in case, you but can change the, whole the channel. atomic genre is really good. You know, like you think of it came from beneath the sea and anything about it, like a giant octopus. But that's uh, not the original name. What was this originally called, Tom? Monstrosity? It was Monstrosity. originally called Monstrosity. And they said, oh, let's make it an atomic film. So they put the atomic brain. Yeah, because that was hot and happening. I don't think when... there's any atoms or nuclear mm. devices used in this film. <laughs> I could be wrong. Hey, if you're bored and life is, you know, right now we live in weird times. So, hey, if this you know, takes you away, you go for it, folks. When you live in the Poulter Mansion, all times are weird. So. Well, I'm happy to be here in Bodega Bay. Well, you one you of my have favorite. stories about oh, the yes. birds. Oh, the birds. We want to hear your stories about the birds. Mm-hmm. And maybe if you have any stories about the bees. It, <laughs> I want to hear oh, those as well. the birds and the bees. No, oh. but we need to get to this film. Mm. And then when we come back, we're going to talk with you all night long. Right? Right. All right. Off we go to the atomic brain. You guys stick around. If you don't like the film, stick around for Jan because she's wonderful. I'm good. See you soon. Deep below, Dr. Frank takes the chance of smashing his way into a newly sealed vault. His experiments cannot continue without another body. The watchman's mind was not on body snatches, just his usual nip. Inside the vault, a body waits.
this is one of the doctor's mistakes, a monstrosity, an animal's brain grafted to a human body. Leaving the dead watchman, the monstrosity carried the girl's body out of the vault. It fears and obeys one master, Dr. Frank. Here beneath the old mansion, the doctor carefully prepared for another transplant. This body had been in the vault for only a few hours. Chances seemed better this time. Still, Dr. Frank was doubtful. Tissue in dead bodies deteriorates rapidly. Where were the live, fresh bodies he'd been promised? He bitterly resents that every step forward depends on the whim of a miserly old woman brooding upstairs in her bedroom. And Hetty March wonders. Has she been a fool, squandering money on this strange experiment? Money hoarded through a long, greedy lifetime, each day more money, each day death getting closer? Ah, but to start life again in a brand new body, beautiful and young, no price can be too high for that. Can she really trust the doctor? Can she really trust anyone? Hasn't everyone tried to cheat her? Wanting her money while they smiled at her ugliness? But they never got a penny. Oh, how she made them sweat. Especially this old fool, companion and gigolo. How many years she's kept him dangling on promises. Well, sometimes it's convenient to have a man, especially when he comes cheaper than servants. That the Austrian girl? Lionel Rhodes, 18, no family, pleasing personality, whatever that might mean. Hmm? Thick ankles, pimply face. But she always smiles when she's spoken to, very likely. Well, application forms for a servant girl don't usually include bust, waist, and hip measurements. We interrupt this mm. program to bring you a All three will be here tomorrow, and then you can choose. Early this evening at Greenhaven Cemetery, the body snatchers brutally murdered night watchman Robert Payne, 62, who evidently interrupted his killers during their ghoulish task. His neck was broken. The imprint of a huge pair of hands was found on his throat. It's the opinion of the police that the same gang that has previously... Ring for Dr. Frank. So that's what he was doing.
of his hocus pocus, Eddie. The doctor transplanted a brain from a live dog to a dead human body. You saw the creature walk out of that cylinder alive. How many failures since then? Still, it's your money. The bodies must be fresh. This specimen is excellent. And the police are looking for the body statue. Why the local cemetery, Doctor? Are you trying to blaze a trail to our door? The final test was essential for your protection. As for the police, if they come here, I hit this switch. A nuclear reaction is set off. Close the circuit breaker. Ah. And in a matter of minutes, this house and any evidence it might contain becomes a radioactive hole in the ground. Be careful. But we can wait for that until after your operation. Well, nothing must go wrong. There's no sign of life. Watch. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Two creature features. You know, it's always nice to welcome people back after the first segment of the mm -hmm, film because mm -hmm. it means we'll probably keep them for the rest of the night. Oh, good. You know, if they're, if they're gone, then they're gone. It's their We've loss. Lost yeah, their loss. But, you mm -hmm. know, this film, this mansion mm -hmm. in the film, mm -hmm. you know, I try to find a place like that in L.A. And they do <laughs> not make play. I think it's a set. Uh-huh, probably. However, up. some of the houses in L.A., like Sunset Boulevard, you know, right. the mansion that I Billy Wilder well. moved, uh, I mean, used. And then also, in the, uh, Billy Wilder's favorite film was Double Indemnity. Right. He told me that. Wilder told me that. He said, the only time I ever got it right was Double Indemnity. And I said to him, oh, so Some Like It Hot, Sunset Boulevard. I love Some Like I It Hot. I know, right? Why? I mean, this guy's such a perfectionist. But right. anyway, the house in Double Indemnity, they start out, Fred McMurray says, Oh, this house would go for at least fifteen thousand. You know, I mean, oh, now it would be now. what twelve million. million. Yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. right. So um, that house, what style was it? Uh, I don't uh, know. I, like I don't know. Yeah, older Victorian. I cannot find a Victorian in Los Angeles. No, but in San Francisco, you sure could. No, with noisy plumbing. Noisy no, plumbing. In San Francisco, yeah, they're all narrow. Uh huh. They're thin people. Uh huh. Very thin people. <laughs> Very thoughtful, right. thin people. I would not fit. Do you know a lot of people became interior designers and architects because of movies? Because of like the Art Deco sets in the Fred and Ginger oh, I can movies. Imagine. On Rebecca, remember right. that crazy Mandalay? You know, these insane now, Rebecca, homes. Rebecca, was that not the one they filmed in Santa Rosa? Uh, no, that would be Shadow of a Doubt. No, that which, one Which, by well. the way, was Hitch Hitchcock's favorite movie. 
That was his favorite. Uh huh. Of oh. all of his films, Shadow of a Doubt was his mm. favorite film, and it was done right I, in Santa Rosa. I've been to that train station. Isn't that great? No, I've actually taken a train from that See, train station. See, we're talking about scary movies here. What? And one of the things that make movies scary is uh, when he takes something that's normal, like Small Town USA, Santa right. Rosa, especially when he made that movie, Shadow of a Doubt, and he makes it into something frightening, like he did with Mount Rushmore, like he did with a shower oh, right. inside. Psycho. Right. So you take something normal and you make it frightening. Like and a knife. That's freaky. A knife that you used to cook, yeah. vegetables, uh -huh. you used to stab somebody. That's uh, like what you mean, right? Well, somewhat, right. yes. Uh huh. Right. And right. also, uh, like the my favorite Hitchcock film is called uh, Strangers on a Train. I like uh, villains oh. that are very um, uh, gentleman villains. Now, Strangers on a Train has mm -hmm. been redone in so many ways. Mm -hmm. We were chatting about Peter Falk. Oh yes, the break. yes, yes. And he had a Columbo episode where there was like a uh huh, like you do this murder, I'll do that. Right, right, right. But you want to see the original film. You always, when it comes to Hitchcock, which is this time of you know, whatever time of year you're in, if you want a thriller, right. and it's not about the blood and guts, you know, I get kind of bored with that. Right. I like the anticipation, of course, of the blood and guts, the implied terror. Yeah. All right. Well, what do you say we get back to this film? Yes. When we come back, I want to hear everything about how you started doing this. So mm -hmm. don't, let's talk about that. All right, here we go. Back to the atomic brain. Do not go away. It's going to be a fun night. About 10 miles. Which way? That way. Are you going to Hollywood? No such luck. I'm what's known as a born domestic. For the next 12 months, I'll be scrubbing floors and making beds. But when my time's up, Hollywood will look out. That's strange. A foreign domestic agency has paid my passage, too. I'm from Vienna, Austria. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I'm from England. No. Is this your first trip? Yes. I'm awfully excited. <laughs> <laughs> Por favor. I know speak English very good. Are you going to work for Mrs. March, too? This sounds like a sister act. You, too? Nina Road? Yes, sir. Anita Gon Gonzalez? Beatrice Mullins, eh? That's right. Are you Mr. March? No. I work for Mrs. March. Phone. Three new bodies, fresh, live, young bodies. No families or friends within thousands of miles, no one to ask embarrassing questions when they disappear. I wondered which one Mrs. March would pick. The little Mexican, the girl from Vienna, or the buxom blonde. Victor knew his pick, but he still felt uneasy. Making love to an 80-year-old woman in the body of a 20-year-old girl is insanity. 
Still, Hetty's plan to transfer her fortune to the new body had been brilliant. Unpleasant to think of what was going to happen to these girls, but a man has to consider his own future. What would happen to him if Hetty were to cast him off after all these years? Warm welcome to hang out. Well, there's your new home, girls. <sighs> Gives me the shivers. Aren't there any neighbors? No. Are there any other servants? No, but I don't think you're going to find it boring. What a jolly little place this is. What was that? No one's to leave this house without permission. Enough. Hurry along. Hurry up. Now go. Turn round, slowly, get the doctor, get the doctor. As with the other bodies stolen from cemeteries, the nerve endings of the brain were too far gone to receive a proper transplant. The experiment had failed to produce anything more than a walking, breathing, zombie-like creature. But the doctor permitted her to wander about the laboratory. She was quite harmless and, at times, even amusing. Charming, isn't she? Did you want something? Uh, Mrs. March is waiting for you. The girls have arrived. She doesn't have a brain. Might be advantages. I want them examined immediately. Very well. This way. Victor, the doctor can conduct the examination perfectly. <laughs> what an old spoil spot I am. <laughs> Have you disconnected the phone? Can't I depend on you for anything? Won't it be nice when those girls start calling police, employment agencies, immigration authorities, consulates? There will be no phone calls.
Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to Creature Features. Jan stepped away for a short moment so that Tangela can slip in and see some of these gifts we received in the mail, right? Lots of gifts. A couple. A couple. A couple is good. Let's start with the mail though, All right. right? From San Jose. San Jose. Do you know the way to San Jose? I do, do you? We have GPS. Oh, GPS is wonderful. All right, this is from Richard Bravo. Oh, we know these folks. And they sent a Halloween card. You know, we're going to be getting these for a while. You know, if you guys want to send us something for a holiday, send it like a month before. Because, you know, we have to go down to the post office and pick it up. And then usually she goes, and then we have to dig them out of her bedroom. She gets lost. She, no, she, she reads them in her room, and then she shoves them behind the bed. It's terrible. So, you know, it could be a month before we see your mail. All right. Oh, this is from... Jenna and Mara, look, they drew your picture. We had them on, remember? We had them on a little while ago. Nice photo, and here's a card. It says, uh, to the Creature Features crew, thank you for a memorable experience. We all had a wonderful time. We hope you have a spectacular day, the Bravo family. Rich, Rosie, Mara, and Jaina. Well, thank you guys so much. They were fun. They were in the studio audience. That's not, you know, I wish one day we can, like, do that all the time. It's difficult because this is all done in my living room. I need a bigger living room. Parlor. Uh. Something of the kind. All right. We'll hang this up someplace nice. What do you got next, Mr. Livingston? We have one from Merritt, British Columbia. British Columbia. That's in Canada, right? I believe so. Shaylin Page. Oh, and she spells it with an I and an E. That's nice. The classic all way. Right, the Creature Features. Canada Post has all kinds of little bats and things and a skull on the back. And what did she send us? All right, what do we have here? Oh, my goodness. This is wonderful. Look, it's a drawing of Tangela. It looks just like you. In fact, it kind of looks better than you. She looks so innocent. Yeah, I, I know. That's it. She looks innocent. And look, her hair's clean. That's important. All right, she goes, Tangela's always quiet, so does that mean she's always up to something? Yes. These questions prove I watch your show, not that I need proof, all right? Have you checked on your property lately for any of your staff buried alive? No, we have a rule here, she cannot abuse the staff, except Andrew. Andrew she can abuse, but she cannot bury him alive. Let's see, anything else in here? Oh, another note. All right, let's see. This looks like the shortened version of her note because she wrote such a long one. So here it is. Dear Creature Features, I'm so excited to finally write to the show. I've been practicing my drawing skills for this moment, hoping it all paid off. It did. That's wonderful drawing. We're going to hang that up. Uh, love how you guys show the older movies. Movies now are things that want to make one puke. You know, some movies do make me want to puke. She's right. My family says I'm a great artist. I hope this picture proves it. Yes, they are correct. Tangela, does it have two L's or one? Two L's for Tangela. She's my favorite character in the show. I love her doll. Gory but awesome. I hope you're not talking about the creepy baby. Or maybe she's uh. talking about the Fijian mini baby. I don't know. You have to be more specific when you refer to her dolls. The show is different. When I say different, I mean I love it. Other shows are not so friendly. Creature Features is for the family. The movies are super great for movie night. We just finished watching The Screaming Woman. My family really wanted me to write this letter. I will write more. Definitely yes on that. Sincerely, Shailen Page from Marriott, BC, Canada. Merritt. Merritt. Two R's, two T's. Merritt. British Columbia, Canada. I love British Columbia. I love Canada too, but uh, you know, I've not been in quite some time. I have to go up again. Thank you so much again. Next up, packages. Packages. Oh, it's Christmas. Christmas on Creature Features. This is from Larkspur. Larkspur, California. California. All right. 
This is a shoebox size, but it's heavier than shoe. Mr. John Hogg, Locksburg, California. You know, Locksburg is a short drive from here. And it looks like you already opened this. Yes. No, maybe so. Well, we have to check it. Yeah. See, it is shoes. I knew it. Somebody sent me shoes. I like I getting shoes. I don't think so. I'm size 11, in case you're wondering. All right, let's look at the card first. Oh, there's bloody things in here. All right. Halloween's here. No, Halloween's slightly past us, but it's the thought that counts. Uh, and this is my right arm. Yes, October 31st is on Saturday night this year. Hope you caught our show. It was our season five debut premiere. Does Mr. Livingston drink coffee or tea? Tea. Enclosed are some trinkets for the crew. P.S. Maybe Kirk Hammett could chip in for a showing of that classic from 1973. P.P.S. The steampunk goggles are for that sprite with selective mutism. I think she's talking about her. And the Chucky candies or the Chucky candies. All right. Let's see what we've got here. So bloody cotton. Right arm. With an arm. Oh, this is nice. It's actually quite beautiful. Next time I ask you to give me a hand, you can give this to me. Uh. Right. Oh, look, and a cup with the exorcist on it. Look at that. You know, I met her, Linda Blair. She's a nice lady. She likes dogs. Chucky candy, as noted. Chucky candy. That's something you need. Uh, another exorcist thing. I don't know what this is. Oh, it's an exorcist magnet. You know, it's important that they put exorcist stuff on magnets. Oh, and here's the steampunk goggles, right? That's something she'd wear on her motorbike. Oh, and an exorcist keychain. My goodness. You know, it's too bad we cannot show the exorcist to go along with this wonderful gift, sir. So uh, thank you so much. And I hope things are well in Locksburg. California, right? California. Yeah. Right. All right, another box? Another box. Here we go. Oh, did I have, do I have to open this? I believe so. Oh, no, it's been pre-opened for me. Well, we make it easy for you, sir. Well, it needs to be easy for me, because I have difficulty with the simplest things. All right, what do we got here? A note with plastic. All right. Off we go. This is from David H. David Hercules, I shall guess. David from North Carolina. Dear Vincent and the rest of the ghosts and ghouls at Creature Features. Greetings from the East Coast. Kindly, uh, happy horror to you and a dismal demise to all your critics. You have a wonderful show and it has become my regular Saturday night thing. Kudos on the creepy goodness. Kindly distribute the gifts and clothes. I know these baubles may be duplicates for you. I've seen Tangela wield her rabid goat, for example, but I thought it wouldn't hurt to have more. Never hurts to have more. The pleasantly plush animal is a friend for the dainty and dangerous Tangella. The beneficial book is for the lanky and long-suffering Mr. Livingston. Don't put that in his head. No, you, you get it when I distribute it. We will sell no wine before it's time. Uh, and the generous jaw of gel is for the vigorously verbose Vincent. You know, I wear gel on weekdays. It keeps, it keeps the hair out of my eyes. Yeah, it's impossible to do anything with hair like this. I hope you can put them all to good use. Thank you for all your hard work, wonderful guests, and woeful films. Keep it up, David H. All right, David, let's see what you sent us. Oh, this is nice. Look, this must be for you. She does have one similar, but a not unicorn. like this one. And then this is the gel for me. Oh, it's a, it's a large jar. That was important. Thank you. And the book... Working with difficult people. You know, obviously, it's talking about her, not me. Don't you make that face. And that's, that was absolutely wonderful, David. All right. We, well, it's like Christmas again. Hmm. You know, Halloween never ends for us. All right. Is that all we got? That's it. That's all we got. If you would like to send us a letter yourself, email, send it to this address down here. If you'd like to send packages of bubbles like our friend David, Send it to the address you see appearing right here. We'll be back shortly with Jan. But first, let's get back to the atomic brain.
hideous. She's useless. There is one more test I should make. Do anything you want with her. The other two? Perfect medical specimens. All right, Anita. Get dressed now and wait for the others. Mrs. March, I am now giving you notice. I do not care to work in this house any longer. I demand that... You have signed an agreement. If you have any objection, you will discuss them with the immigration authorities as provided for in your papers. But, Mrs. March... Later. Stand up, my dear. I've got the same measurements as Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> The lucky girl? Yeah. Allow me to be the first to offer congratulations. <laughs> to both of you. <laughs> For me? Come on. Come on. Your room is in the basement, Anita. Nina, your room is upstairs, right across from the top of the stairs. I'll have to show you. Nonsense. You'll be all right. Go on. She's not in her room. Yes. Victor left a little while ago. Maybe she went with him. 
She didn't get out of this prison without permission, that's for sure. Yes. But she would have said goodbye. Why should she? We only met her yesterday. I don't blame her for not wanting to sleep in the basement. Oh. It's funny, though. Mrs. March wouldn't even listen when I asked to be dismissed. This house gives me the creeps. She doesn't even have any uniforms for us. See, what in the world do you think you're doing? He told us last night to clean and polish in here. Look at your hands. That will leave a stain on them. Now, now, don't argue. Go in and wash them immediately. You can put the things away after Nina cleans them. Mrs. March, where is Anita? Anita? Oh, she left last night. I would like to give notice, too. I will discuss it with you another time. Nina, come here this instant. Yes, Mrs. Match? Your name is it Nina. But Mrs. Match, she's got polish all over hands and I'm not doing anything. I don't want you running up and down stairs. Those pretty legs of yours will get ugly muscles. Send Nina to me. Yes, ma'am. I'll be in my room. Please come with me. I want to show you something. without taking her clothes. I think we'd better get out of here, fast. B, I'd hate to go if she's still here. You'll go now if you go with me. One last experiment before Dr. Frank would be ready. But this was the most critical of all the experiments. For the first time, the grafting operation would be performed on a living human body. And the brain would come from the doctor's favorite cat. Anita was ready. Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories.
You know, Jan Wall. Yes, darling. Empress of entertainment. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to start wearing a hat like you. Yeah, I like the yeah. hat thing. It's too much work. It's That's right. The hair, th it's, it just takes yeah. too much work. Yeah, and there's some lucky blokes out there who like go bald and they just shave it and it's like fine. They don't have to do anything. Me? Plus, you know, I, I can yeah. shave it. One week and next week it'll be like this. Oh, well, it looks nice. No, I think I have little some. little Rod Stewart going on. No, I think I have a <laughs> follicle. It, what's the opposite of a deficiency? Oh, uh, like an asset? Like, a yeah. follicle asset. Uh-huh. Well. I'm a follicle. Something <laughs> like that. I don't know. This film. Mm -hmm. um, experimenting on nubile young women. <gasps> That's Who not right. Yeah. yeah. Well, Vincent know. Price did it in House of Wax, right? I don't I mean, know, but it was not removing the brains, was that's it? That's true. Removing the brains is a little twist, yeah. yeah. You know, I imagine there is a place one can go to find mm. people without brains already. Oh, I know. Just where to go. Oh, really? Washington, D.C. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, yeah. That happens. No, but there's places in L.A. like that as mm -hmm. well. Oh, my yeah, gosh, yes. Right. Well, you yeah. know, the Kardashians and all those kind of, you know, not bright girls, they, I mean, I know they make lots of money and all that, but they... But really not very literate or sophisticated. Now, when you say Kardashian, are you talking yeah. about the aliens on Star Trek? Yeah, exactly. Right, right, <laughs> the aliens right. for sure. Yeah, that's for it's sure. just, I never knew girls like that, you know. I mean, right. I mean, but in my school uh, down in West L.A., there were of, often uh, not bright girls, and they could have had their brains removed. But you were a bright girl. Yeah, oh yeah. How did you get started in this business? Oh, I was so lucky. Uh, I was a uh, in high school. I mean, I've always loved film. My right. parents loved film. I was raised around movie stars, of truly, course. in Beverly Hills and Westwood. You were at Ground uh, Zero. Yeah, it was right. Ground Zero. Right. And they lived down the street from us and around us. And uh, Buddy Epson lived on one. This is on Hunt and Drive. Buddy Epson lived on I one love side. Buddy Epson. And, and, and on the other side was uh, the guy who played Bat Masterson, uh, Barry, um, uh, John Barry, Jim Barry, Freddie Barry was his, do his son. Yeah. And, and he was Gene Barry. Anyway, uh, oh, he would have hated if I forgot his name. But anyway, uh, and later he did. But he's Kasha. dead now, right? He's so dead. I think he'll but, forgive you. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so, uh, but I mean, uh, down the street was Natalie Wood and Robert Wagner and Barbara Stanwyck oh, lived fun. down at the bottom of Benedict Canyon. Oh, I love and they were school. all over the place. Barbara and, mm -hmm. Stanwyck lived in a canyon. Mm -hmm. Was it like a big valley? Uh, like, like a big valley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's Whoa, nice. you're quick. Wow. That's nice. And uh, anyway, you'd see them everywhere. And they were fabulous because in those days, the stars were very uh, grateful. Like you were talking about other people. I want to hear about you. Oh, about How me. You sorry, started. sorry. Oh, so I fell in love with movies because uh, not only out in the round me, but also my parents loved to watch movies. Right. My dad loved Errol Flynn. My mother loved Rosalind Russell. I mean, we'd sit around musicals. My dad played big band drums. Right. So musicals were like everywhere in the house. Of Louis course. Armstrong, Judy Garland. And uh, I just fell in love with it. Also, I was an opinion girl and my parents said have opinions so I started writing for you my elementary school newspaper oh. uh, we had a newsletter in my elementary right. school Warner right. Avenue and I, I wrote movie reviews How and wonderful. since a lot of the people worked on the movies that went to this school that you know the kids parents oh, goodness. they were always talking to me and it was very exciting and I started out and then I got discovered when I was in high school I was put on TV on a show called Youth Inquires on KTLA Oh, uh -huh, how fun. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It and was that great. Was it. And that was the beginning. That's so when I fell in love this, with television. You've been doing and this I never since stopped. childhood. Yes, it's childhood. Oh, my goodness. And I've been everything. I've been an AD, an associate director, only the second woman to ever do that at a network. Uh, that's a big deal to be an associate director. I got in the Director's Guild, which in L.A. means people return your calls. Right. Hello. And then uh, lots of stars, big stars, stage manager. Uh, and then I started producing documentaries as a little radical. And then... Uh, Things were good. I got How the Directors fun. Guild and the world just opened up to me. And then I came up here, up f uh, up to, because uh, I fell in love. I right. fell in love with a man who reminds me of Jimmy Stewart. Oh, I thought does. you were going to say you left your heart in San Francisco. Um, yeah, I did. I did. So I All moved right. up here to be with him. And I had lots of jobs up here. And I ended up getting on TV and radio. And uh, I've interviewed just about everybody you can well, think you of, know, including Tippi Hudren, because we are right here we're in talk beautiful about Bodega her. Bay. We're going to talk about her. Mm -hmm. But first, we're going to get back to this film. Yes. But when we come back, Tippi Hedren and the birds. All right. We'll be right back with the wonderful Jan Wall. But first, we're going to get back to the atomic Ooh. brain. 1963. Don't go away. I'm stuck here, so I can't. <laughs> it's 
It's me, Nina. What about your clothes? Never mind, let's go. B, she almost saw us. Let's wait a while to make sure we won't run into her. I'm here, Mrs. March. She's locked us in. Open it. I said open it. Mrs. March. Well, you took long enough. 
The lawyer will see you in the morning. I told him you were going to change your will. You'll have to check the basement door. It broke loose. resent the way Mrs. Marsh treats you. I can't say that I blame you. Kitty's always been very fond of me, haven't you? Does she have all the instincts of a cat? Watch. My name is Tim, and I'm from Novato, and I'm a huge Creature Feature fan. Grew up with Bob Wilkins, loved it so much. Missed the guy coming out of the coffin with the big cigar, telling me to stay tuned. So thanks for keeping it up, you guys. Watch you every Saturday night. You guys do a fantastic job. Thanks for entertaining me and uh, letting me relive some of my childhood. You know, uh, Jan Wall, famous yes, movie reviewer and celebrity interviewer. I am now beginning to figure out why they call this the atomic brain. Why? Because the, the machine, uh -huh. which is like a navel gazing machine, uh -huh. actually uses radioactive material to do the brain thing. And they could put yeah. any kind of brain in they want. Right, dogs Animal, and humans. Yeah. Right, yeah. My dog is so spoiled. I, I don't know. I met your dog. I like your dog. Oh, he's a doll. Oh, she's a doll. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, she's fantastic. Ella Fitzgerald. Uh, we lost recently uh, Duke Ellington, her twin brother. But, oh, no. Uh, but you know what? He lives forever. You know, dogs are so marvelous. You know, I they love... make us better humans. But oh, I, would, I, I don't know if I want to. She's very busy. You know, she's a busy little girl. Right. Well, that's good. More food, more You walks. said she's how old? Uh, now she's 12. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a She's a good old. girl and she's, she's in great active. shape. She's active. Yeah. She's but active. putting a dog brain in somebody or a cat brain. No. You well, know. what about a bird brain? Yeah. Oh, the, the birds. birds. We have to talk about the birds. the birds. What a segue. Yes. I got to tell you, it was so fun being with uh, Tippi Hedren. Tippi Hedren was mm -hmm. the star, the, the blonde. Of the birds. She's the one that brought mm -hmm. the love birds. Mm -hmm. In the small mm -hmm. car, mm -hmm. right? And uh, she's marvelous. She's also in the movie Marnie, and she's just a wonderful right. human being. She, she had a lot of problems with Hitchcock. She looks gorgeous. Uh, girls, you right. know, if you want to see somebody who only gets more beautiful as she gets oh. older, that would be Tippy. Wow. She's still with us. She won now, Shambhala Institute. She has a famous daughter. Yes, Melanie Griffith. Melanie Griffith. Yes, uh huh. Wow. And uh, but I loved interviewing Tippy. I've done it a few times actually. She comes to the Bay Area a lot. She's always raising money for Shambhala, which takes um, big cats, you know, lions right. and tigers and stuff, and uh, that have been let go of zoos or people raised oh. them and had to get rid of them. And she has an institute down in L.A. Well, she should bring him here too. Yeah. No, oh, no. She's Tangela a doll. loves large cats. Well, actually, uh, Tippy would do, would love to do this show. She really would. Oh, she's well, a we lovely need to have her woman. On. 
Lovely woman. No, he, yeah. We tried to get Hitchcock, but it turns out he's dead. He is dead, but his right. granddaughter is alive and well. Oh, and no, I actually, want to meet her. Actually, his daughter, Patricia, who was one of the stars of my favorite Hitchcock movie, Strangers on a Train, oh. uh, she is still with us as well. And she had a role in this film. Uh, uh, not in The Birds, but in Strangers on a Train. Right, I see, right. yeah. She was, oh, she was his only daughter. She was in Psycho, too. Oh, she was? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. I know. Hitchcock was just so remarkable. I mean, I just love the idea of really scary stuff that's not... Uh, disgusting. Right. For example, did you ever see a movie direct? The only time Charles Lawton, the actor, ever directed a movie was called Night of the Hunter. It's with Robert Mitchum. Oh my God! It's right. so made for you, honey. I mean, he's got he plays a mad preacher. Two of my favorite scary movies both star Robert Mitchum, which just right. tells you that this guy could do anything. He's a preacher, mad preacher, Robert Mitchum, Night of the a Hunter. Has love tattooed on one side. He has hate tattooed on oh, the other. Oh, I've seen photos of this. Yes. And then, it's iconic. Uh, it's almost like Citizen Kane. He is Kane. psychotic. Yeah. It's, oh, it's more. It's scarier than Citizen right. Kane. It's very scary. And uh, it's very good, Night of the Hunter. He's after these two children for their father's money. And then he also did the original. And see the original, folks, as much as I like Martin Scorsese. The original what? Cape Fear. Cape Fear. Yeah, and Mitchum plays an insane I never knew guy. there was an original Cape Fear. Yes, with Gregory Peck. I always thought it had, uh, what's his Robert head? De Niro. Right. Right. The trouble with the remake is that Robert De Niro is so crazy in it. He's so psychotic, immediately you know it. Whereas oh. Robert Mitchum's got that sexy, smoldering oh, thing. So, so you don't like, know it right away. And it makes it worse when you find out. Right, when you find out. Right. So when right. the chick goes up to the hotel room uh, with Robert Mitchum, you kind of believe she would do that because he's kind of sexy and smoldering. So when he turns out to be insane and kills her, well, that's a bad thing. But it's a surprise. And it's more shocking that way. Shocking. Right. Whereas De Niro, you already know he's nuts. You're calling 911 when right. he's miles out he of town. He just shows his face and you yeah. think he's mad. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm getting the signal. we got to get back to this film. But when we come back, we're going to talk about some more of the wonderful personalities you've hung out with. Yeah, she I've knows been lucky. Everything. She knows more than I do. Mm, about something. Everybody knows more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon. B. Is that Anita? Where? Oh, I don't think so. should have locked them up. They're not about to leave this house after what they've witnessed. They know Hans is outside there. Even if we could get past that creature outside, there is still the electric fence. The phone's dead. We can't get help that way. If we could get the car. That's it. Victor. Victor. He likes me, I guess. 
If you could get the keys from him. B. I was having a little nightcap. Who do you think you are, pinching me? What? What? Maybe you'd like some company. Someone like me? <laughs> That's more like it. Don't you like me, Victor? Wait. Hans is chained. Let's go outside. Outside? I think I'd like that. What's the matter with you? Don't you know me? Anita, listen to me. It's... <coughs> Anita. Anita, let me help you. Wait. Take my hand.
Anita. Anita. Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Portions of this program are sponsored by DoorTech, distributor of quality commercial doors nationwide. complex, isn't it? The human eye. She's unconscious, but she'll live. No. She will live. How I need her all. She's dead. Nina, dear. Come along with us now. You've had a bad shock. Get out of here, both of you. The same with me. Why don't you do something for her? I've done what I can for now. Later, an operation might be possible. I'm preserving the eye. Let me show you. Come over here. The cellular structure is being kept alive by these electrical vibrations. I use the same principle in keeping that hand alive. Dee is a very lucky girl. You think that ironical? Let me explain. I'm the only man alive today capable of restoring your friend's sight. Dr. Alexis Carell, who pioneered the transplanting of vital human organs, kept a portion of an animal's heart alive for many years. For this, he received the Nobel Prize. And I, who have so far surpassed his efforts. Surely you don't want to compare yourself with Dr. Correll. He was humane. I, too, fight to preserve life and to find the means to improve the lives of future generations. Your viewpoint is that narrow, ignorant one held by the medical society today, which forces me to work in a place like this, to give in to the whims of a foolish old woman because she can supply me with the funds I need to continue my work. Doctor. There. 
Forgot all the clothes? Yes. And made my hair appointment? I took care of everything on your list while you were talking with the lawyer. Hair appointment, Monday, 10 a.m., Charles of the Ritz, under Nina's name. I want Nina to model these later, after I've rested. You tell her. They're back. I'll have to leave you now. Remember, I'm going to try to get us out of here tonight. No. Forget about me. I won't go. B. Don't talk like that. Mrs. March had not realized her new body had such a satisfactory shape. Perhaps not as spectacular as the English girl, but in excellent taste. She couldn't help being amused. The stupid girl was not only modeling Mrs. March's future wardrobe, but Mrs. March's future body. So firm, so nicely rounded in places men like. You might have knocked when you came in, Victor. I'm sorry. Don't stop your style show on my account. Does my uh, aged lock in Var disturb you? Eddie, that's unkind. Shut up. You see, it's hard for a vain, stupid man to realize that he holds no attraction for a lovely young girl. You're not needed now, Victor. Close the door quietly when you go out. I'm not going to be needed at all. That's what you're saying, isn't it? After tomorrow, when... Victor! That's enough! Get out! That's the way it's going to be when what? Don't ask tiresome questions. That will be enough for tonight. I want us both to get some rest. Try to sleep. But Mrs. March... That's an order. Do as I say. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are still with the legendary, Jan Wall. Legendary. You are most legendary. I mean, all these names you've dropped yeah. tonight. I'm lucky girl. I've, I've been around. I've got some catching up to do. So uh, this film, mm -hmm. do you know it was filmed in 10 days? Really? Yeah. So no time for post-production editing. No, I think I think it's quite <laughs> obvious it was filmed in 10 days. Now, you know, I, sometimes, a, sometimes a deadline makes things come out better. Uh-huh, yes. I, I cannot do anything with a the deadline. They say, oh, we need something from you in like a year. Mm -hmm. Like in 364 days, I shall do whatever it is that they need. Well, you know, Spielberg told me. I mean, I'm sorry to drop names. Spielberg know, told sorry, her. I know, sorry, sorry. Spielberg told her. I know her. that sounds All terrible, right. but he said the reason Jaws came out as well as it did is because they had no money and no time. Oh, so, it? yeah, and he said if we had had money, I mean, I would have tinkered with that shark and, you know, but this right. way he had to get it done. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. my goodness. So sometimes not having money and time is a good right. thing. Right, So I want to know, who was your worst interview? Well, there's been a few. I don't usually talk well, about no, them. No, no, but worst. I'm there's along, only one we're worst. Getting along so there's well. one worst. Worst, I would say the most disappointing. Okay. 
Okay, so it was for the uh, junket. There's this thing called press junkets right. where you get flown to these places and you get all kinds of stuff and you get usually about seven, eight minutes with these big stars. Nice. And it's 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 cool sometimes, right. but when they're in bad moods. And this was for the Star Wars prequel. And this is, uh, you know, do you remember when that came out? Of course. Uh, yeah. Right. And I uh, got sent to New York on that. And Liam Neeson was the star. No. And, uh, yeah, and I love Liam Neeson. I truly do. But... Uh, unfortunately, he was in a bad mood. He did not like the film. The film got terrible reviews. Oh, he seemed and, like such a nice um, guy. And he was very unhappy. He did not and like to the make it worse. And to make it worse, no, he did not like doing it, and he did not like his part. But to make it worse, I wanted to talk about Schindler's List. So you're not supposed to go on a junket except and talk all about this something stuff else. and talk about something else. So I was in the wrong as well. Because he was Schindler. I know. But he was very unhappy, and he actually walked out on me. Oh, the no. other terrible one was from the cast of Friends, and he was this LeBlanc, Matt LeBlanc. Matt LeBlanc. Joey Tribbiani. This was so bad. It was when he was doing a movie about some kind of ape being in a hotel room with him. Oh, well, you know, he's terrible outside of Friends. If he oh. does anything besides Friends, really? he's, well, I, he doesn't I, you do know, well. Here's what I knew. Hungover smelled bad, and was really angry at having to do this. Look, these guys are overpaid as it is. Right. You know, d you know, do what Tom Cruise does or any of these great, you know, some of these really great people, they're really wonderful. They want to tell you things because they know it's part of the game. Right. And he did not. Ah. Uh -huh. And he seems like such a nice guy on uh -huh. Friends. And Kim Novak was on the set the same day, one of my favorite actresses right. ever, ever, ever. Talk about Hitchcock, Vertigo, that's another story, but I love her Bell, Book, and Candle, right. which would be perfect here. She plays oh, a right. witch. Yes. Fabulous. Well, anyway, um, she was on the same set, and she was waiting to go on with right. me right. for the next interview. Right. He, she, he walks pa uh, she walks past him, and she stopped and said, oh, Mr. LeBlanc, I, I love liked you in Friends or something like that. Right. And he just blew her off like she was no. another fan. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, what a jerk. That makes me so sad. Well, I'm sure he's fine, and I'm sure I'm going to hear from his lawyer. And Liam Neeson's terrific, and he does lots of good work. It's right. just that sometimes people disappoint you, and sometimes they amaze you. Right. Like Jodie Foster amazed me. She was so smart, so wonderful. I love her. Oh, my I God. I mean, not like love, like creepy love, but yeah. love her work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. I got to interview the people from uh, Priscilla, Queen of the Deserts, one of my favorite oh, films. Nice. And, I mean, these people are great and, and exuberant. And so most they of them are nice. You things. Most of them I are nice, say, but sometimes... Yeah, but it's just that my questioning is hard for them. Because oh. I ask them, like, who made you want to be in the movies? I'm not just there well, to be a, a shill for their question. movie. For their, it's not a... Well, some of them can hardly walk and chew gum, you know. Oh. Uh, especially the really young, popular ones. But some of them are so small. Like, um, uh, there's a number... Oh, oh, uh, oh this... There's a number of great ones like Dustin Hoffman and people like that. Well, he's but, not so young anymore. No, he's not so young. But I mean, uh, uh, there's just ones that will ask you, what are movies I should see? Really? You know? Wow. Like, what should I see? Right. Because, you know, I'm here to say Sweet Smell of Success. Right. Uh, you know, there's all these great films that actors need to see, and they act like they've never heard of anybody. That makes me crazy. I want to reach out and it's slap them. Well, I you mean, should one time. Uh, well, come on. That will be on the news. I talked to some stupid g young girl who had never heard, had never seen a Betty Davis movie. How do you not, not see? Not one Betty Davis I film? I mean, not even Baby Jane. How do you do that? It's like an architect not That's knowing who Frank Lloyd Wright was. That's a crime. Oh, I, I really, I came this, oh, oh, I came so close to slap her. You know, next time I ask somebody about their worst interview, I'm going to say, did you ever interview anybody you wanted to slap? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do it that way next time. Yeah. All right, I'm going to get the signal. We're going to finish up this film. What about, did you ever interview anybody you want to kiss? I will not answer that question. Did you? Yeah. All right. Want to kiss. You're going to tell me during the break. All right, let's finish up Atomic Brain. And when we come back, we're going to find out what Miss Jan is doing next. So don't go away. And you better not go away either, because I want to know what's going on with this kissing thing. <laughs> Off we go. Atomic Brain. Bye. looking for me, are you? Why would a pretty young girl want to be around an old man? What did you try to tell Mrs. March? Mm hmm? 
So that's what you plan to do. Get rid of old Victor once you get all that money. The only thing is, of course, it won't really be you. Victor, please tell me. Try to make sense. I am telling you. Tomorrow you'll be one of the richest women in the world. There's a press release that's in the mails now. To all the major news syndicates. Orphan girl sole heir to March millions. Nine of Rhodes has a lucky star. I don't understand. The next press release will be March Mansion destroyed by fire. Cinderella girl, Nina Rhodes, sole survivor. Only it won't be you. It's a pity, too. You're nice the way you are. Please don't let it happen. You could help me and B get away. When you're a rich woman, you wouldn't forget an old friend. A friend who'd saved your life, would you? Get out of the car. And stay there. Victor, V too. V must come too. Wait a minute. Just to make sure. Find this. to come with me. No, I won't go. Why should I want to go on living like this? I'll get Victor to help me and we will carry you. Did you want something from Victor, dear? Sit down, my dear. I'm afraid you're wearing yourself out with all this rushing round. I don't like that. You realize she's mad, don't you, Dr. Frank? <gasps> Relax. Hurry, doctor. I'll be ready for you shortly, Mrs. March. I'll be waiting. Finally about to happen. You don't know what it's been like for me, living with this ugly body of mine. Knowing that any attention I received was not for me, but my money. Well, nobody got any of it. I've never known what it was like to be loved for myself alone. Why did you kill Victor, Mrs. March? Victor? <laughs> Victor. 
to as a fool. I'm a practical woman, Dr. Frank, a business woman. I've never been a very practical person. I suppose that makes me a fool, too, in your eyes. Of course not. Relax, Mrs. March, just relax. Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. paper making Vicky your legal guardian. That's right, isn't it? I saw something, didn't I? That would probably work as well for me. We could stay here. None of this would have to be destroyed. You're doing better, aren't you? Why don't you try it on your own? I wonder now if Mrs. March didn't intend along with all the rest of this. You're a very wealthy woman now, Nina. What I must decide is how to keep you and your friends available with the least amount of nuisance to myself. I could keep you under sedation until your signature was required. Or I could replace your brain amenable. What about Mrs. March, Doctor? Mrs. March no longer has a thing to say. Do you, my dear? Completely recovered, I'd say. How do you feel? <clears throat> I guess the transplant would be better. It won't hurt. Dr. Frank had enjoyed this transplantation. Mrs. March's brain winding up in the body of a cat. Poetic justice to think of autocratic Mrs. March scavenging in back alley garbage cans for her dinner. But Mrs. March doesn't take things lying down. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mrs. March did not intend to let her money get out of sight. She would follow that girl. Sometime, someplace, revenge would come. And that brings the nuclear reactor down on the atomic brain. What would you think of this film, Jan? Mm. You seen better? I've seen better, darling. I've seen better as well. Way better. How about you, Tangela? Did you like it? She, no, you know why she did not like it? It's because what? the cat died. <gasps> oh, honey, that no. must be tragic well, for no, you. No, the cat got its, or the main person, got its comeuppance and then died. You as know well. what's a funny movie right now? Adam's Family Values. You like that? Well, well that's, that's an old film. It's written, but it's written by, it is not old, would be the 30s and the 40s. It's a relative, it's only a few, 20 years old. It's Paul, old in Tangella years. Tangella knows it though. She knows this movie no. because no, we all Paul do. Rudnick wrote it. Listen to the screenplay. It's like Young Frankenstein. Brilliant screenplay. And you Very know him. Funny. I bet you know him personally. Yeah, of course she does. <laughs> she knows everybody. He's my hero. He's my uh, one of uh, what you. I get on YouTube almost every morning and do the best of Mel Brooks. Oh, really? Because it cheers me up. Right. It's fun, right. and he's brilliant. You know, I met Mel Brooks once. Yeah. Yeah. No, Good experience. No, so not in this context. I but see. Yeah. No, it was on a set of film, and his wife who. Passed away. And Bancroft. And Bancroft. Yeah. I met her yeah. as well. That's oh, nice. listen to you. It was before I started doing this, <laughs> which is nice, because mm -hmm. back then it was a big deal. Now it's like, oh, look, who's here? Mm -hmm. Nice. But you're a big deal. All right, so what are you doing next? Well, I do a lot of uh, Zoom where people want me to talk to their organizations or, oh. or groups. And I talk about what to watch right now and so, what's good right now on the Internet, what's good to watch. What's, uh, or else it could be, I just did a thing for uh, Rose Society about flowers in the movies. Nice. Yeah, and I've done uh, food and wine in film and alcohol in the movies for a, a rehab group. <laughs> I mean, I love doing it. All you have to do is go to Jan Wall. 
jenwall.com. jenwall.com to learn more about Jen. And, uh, and to contact me. And con contact yeah. She wants to be contacted by yeah. you. So you're and gonna... I do KGO radio and I do Armed Forces radio, sta radio stations. I like radio because it's theater of the mind. Armed Forces radio. Uh -huh. No, I, I need to start listening to this. Well, we could just talk. You know, yeah. you don't well, really they, have to. They teach you how to use arms on Armed <laughs> Services radio, right? Yeah, and this movie yeah. teaches you how to use brains. No, no, I only know how to use a revolver. I cannot oh. use an automatic. The whole pullback thing does not work for me. So I'm going to I'm gonna listen for your show. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and watching this Being with you was terrific. Film. No, you're wonderful. We're going to have you back again. Great. Hopefully. Great. Soon. Good. All right. So as you guys go, thank you so much for watching the show. Uh, next week, we're going to try to get a better movie. I cannot guarantee it, but we're going to try, right? <laughs> try. Yeah, she's getting good at choosing the movies for us. Oh, we good. No, it was good last time. So we'll see you next week and have a wonderful rest of your weekend. So, uh, Jan. Yes, dear. You know, you've been doing what I do for a long, long time. Long time. And, you know, you've interviewed a lot of people. How long do you think it's going to take before I get to your level? Um, darling, I really don't think you'll live that long. <laughs>